Well, hello. Today we're doing um, glazing using oils on a chiaroscuro portrait. So this is the lovely Felix, obviously I've done before. And I, I don't know, I don't know why it's so successful, but it's got this nice glow because there's a lot of transparency in the paint here. So I'm going to try and reproduce that on here. So I've sketched out vaguely in pencil. It does look a bit like a girl with a beard. You probably can't see it, it's rather faint. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to slap on, slap on. So I've got burnt sienna here, uh, which is this one. Burnt sienna, which is that lovely uh, colour. It's very transparent, unfortunately the paper's a bit absorbent. So what I'm going to do is pretty much put that nearly all over the place and burnt umber for a bit of dark. And this is Liguin. I'm going to probably use that because I need this to dry. It's going to be a two-day uh, process, in fact, because I need this painting to dry in between. So I'm just going to pretty much go over this with a big brush, uh, the colours I want going on here. And I will be wiping away. Now, this wiping away is very nice. It's very similar to... Uh, the sort of wiping away with charcoal. So I, first I've got to put the paint on and I've got to wipe it away. So bear with me for a moment. Ooh, that's uh, the burnt umber, which is a nice dark one. I've also got it here a bit of paints grey, which I'll probably just slap off his hair. You can see that takes it down a bit. <clears throat> so I'm just going to be putting this on in a big way. And chiaroscuro uh, means out of the shadows, I think something like that, light and dark. A big uh, Caravaggio obviously um, was a master at this and he created, um, someone pointed out that he was never that successful in his lifetime. He had a few commissions. He never had a studio with students uh, to do some of his work for him. I think he was probably a bit of a cantankerous bastard. Uh, but he created this absolute craze for chiaroscuro uh, throughout Europe. And uh, there's an exhibition at the moment at the National, I think, of Artemita Gentileschi. And she's the same generation as him. And all her paintings have got this drama of the light. And when I was in Rome, I um, learned a fascinating thing about... They had a rather odd little exhibit about Caravaggio, this is that. Um, about how he achieved these effects, and they actually had a demonstration. Uh, well, one thing he did, he cut a hole in his roof, and apparently his landlady wasn't that thrilled about that. And uh, the other thing is he kind of set up lights with mirrors as well to get this very strong light. So come down from the roof and bounce off a mirror and bounce onto his subjects. So I'm just going in here and putting some darks on. Um, and I'm still using Liguin. I've got a little bit of um, solvent up my sleeves as well, which would traditionally be turpentine. But I am using uh, Bob Ross. Bob Ross, let me grab it. Uh, I highly... Oh, I'm trying to take the paint brush out now. <clears throat> I highly recommend Bob Ross. Uh, you can see his mineral spirits, odorless thinners. Uh, it's very good, very cheap, completely odorless, probably a little bit poisonous, but much better than turpentine. Uh, that seems all right. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it's half the price. I used to recommend uh, Gamsol, uh, which uh, is a post American make. Again, really, really good, but really expensive. Uh, and Bob Ross is half the price. They sell it at Lawrence's, so there's. Uh, you can get it locally or on the internet. So I'm, what I'm doing, I'm just pretty much covering the whole thing with this colour. Uh, I like the burnt sienna because it's got this lovely glow to it. Uh, see, when you paint with turps, you get drips, which is a good thing. Um, and I, the traditional way of painting with oils would be with turps. Uh, because it dries, it will dry in about half an hour, which uh, oil paints obviously don't do that. So if you just use turps, uh, you get this uh, drying. So I'm just going in here. I think I might want to pink up his ear a bit. You can move the paint around at this stage. Uh, and the reason why uh, this painting of Felix uh, I like so much is that I had odd lighting. So as you can see, the lighting is coming up from here. 
and in fact I'm using the very same light to light the studio, it being December, uh, natural light just ain't going to cut it. So I'm just going over here and I'm hoping, even though this paper is a little bit absorbent, uh, <clears throat> that I'll be able to wipe away some things. So I think I want to perhaps darken his hair. So I've got my, this is my Payne's Grey mixed in with the brown gives this kind of cooler tone, so I want to get the shape of his head. So I'm just using this big soft brush and some liquid, which I think I might run out of soon, to put his hair in. So what you want to do with a chiaroscuro is you want to establish the darks. And that is obviously not dark enough. Now I've got too much liquid on the canvas, but never mind. This is just the underpainting. But, um, and this is one of the basic oil painting lessons I would teach, would be, um, I'm going to use a bit of thinners instead, uh, uh, to do this black and white first. So you do a black and white painting first, like we did with our bottles and jugs. Um, and then add, uh, and then add the colour glazes. So you can do a similar thing with portrait. And it's a very nice, satisfying way to paint. It's really old mastery because in those days they didn't have, uh, the colour was really expensive. I think what I might have to do here is, it's a weird, it's a bit of a white down, there's not too much stuff going on there. Um, so I've just got some rags here, just tear up old t-shirts or something. Uh, trying not to use too many baby wipes in my life, and I'm just going to wipe away some areas because I'm going to get some of that paint off. Get rid of some of the brush strokes. And actually, I might go a little bit crazy here. A good old wipe all over. So I'm now going to apply some more uh, burnt sienna. I think I'm just going to use it as is, although I'm a bit worried it won't be dry. So this is the burnt sienna. And I want to look where the lights and the darks are. So if I just kind of demonstrate on the forehead, perhaps you'll be able to see. Uh, maybe a bit more burnt sienna around here. So I'm just going to get that little thing and have a bit of a wipe. Try paintbrush in my mouth, a white just more or less still seem like a sort of white brush, which is good. Ooh, it's disappeared into a mist. Sorry about the banging. Move my foot. Okay, so I just want to go in here, put these layers on, which is worse than anything. And then, I think I want a bit more burnt sienna over here, so <laughs> he has got even disappeared if I didn't start like this, I don't know. <coughs> right, okay, <laughs> so that sort of works. I'm using Liguin because I want this painting to be dry sometime soon. So I'm just going in here. I'm just using turps. I'm taking some of the paint off. That will be his forehead. And then a bit more turps. Well, the Bob Ross. I want this to come off. So this is quite similar to the wiping away in charcoal. And I often uh, get people to start oil painting like that. Uh, doing the charcoal exercise, just so that you get the idea of refinding the light within your painting. Uh, so we've got a nose over here. Eek! And you see with turps you do get this dripping to some extent, but I really do want to find that light. And right over here, oops, lots of dripping. Remember this is, ah, this is your underpainting. Oh dear. Yeah. So the cheekbones. And I'm just going to wipe that away. I'm going to have to re-establish that because that's not supposed to be there. And then I've got his nose. And it's just here. 
And you could do this uh, with black and white oil painting, which I often get people to do, uh, and then build up on that like I did with my previous one. I didn't want to do this in acrylics because that's, it wouldn't, you wouldn't get the same gorgeous chiaroscuro going on with acrylics because they're very flat and plasticky. Got a nose. And then we've got a little So I'm just trying to catch the white areas here. And I will be applying the paint. I need to find the lights where they are. So he's here, I can just see the underneath. So I want that lightness around his neck. And then uh, his nose. Not quite so much. His lit Adam's apple. There. And then to his Adam's apple. So this is Terps actually taking paint I have applied off. A bit of chest going on down there. Right, well that looks very peculiar, so I'm going to slap some more darks on, I think, to establish. Um, I want to establish a reasonably accurate, almost monochrome painting before I start adding coloured glazes. Uh, let's have another brush. So a nice big brush, my long flats that I like. So I think I need to re-establish this. And here as well. What I need to do to really establish is hairline impact. Um, yes, let's go and establish his hairline. So I've got Payne's Grey, which I can mix with Bird Umber. I really want to establish stuff going on here. And I may point out this portrait did take three weeks to do. Six hours, so this is going to be a bit more slapdash, but I want to demonstrate how you use glazes in a portrait. using pure paint here, although I think I better mix some liquid in it and make hope it will dry. Liquid's got this nice property that uh, it dries in 24 hours. some beard on because that does actually define his chin and there's something weird happening over there. Hang on, I need some more paint spray. <clears throat> okay. Um, and it's quite, it's a nice way to paint this because it helps you abstract the human form in various ways, because I do it like painting too. Um, uh, so you're just drawing the light, and that's the value of the wiping away in, uh, charcoal exercise. So here we have beard, beard, beard. Maybe a little bit of liguin. And I don't know if uh, it's the Windsor and Newton alkalid medium is li liquid. Um, which works very well. So there's his moustache. Uh, there's his lips gone. I suppose they're there somewhere. And that's the rest of his beard. Coming down here. A bit of bone from the And of course the thinner you 
put on the paint, the uh, quicker it will dry. And as I say, if you use a little bit of dirt, which I'm just going to experiment with now. There we go. Uh, right, and now I'm going to start thinking about uh, some detail. And we've got an eyebrow. And he's got his lovely eyelashes. As I say, I'm just trying to oops, establish my dark areas. And what I really want to do is establish this area as being dark. So I'm going to pretty much use, I think, burnt umber. Because uh, the dark defines the light here. So I may have to re-establish his eyelashes, but I'm making sure I'm getting is doing something. Oops. Eek. Giving a rather peculiar shape nose, but hopefully I can correct that. And again, so here I really want this to be dark, and I think this glaze here is a couple of weeks worth of glazes of burnt umber and Payne's grey. on some details on the face. So I think I'm going to need a smaller brush now. <coughs> and look at some details in his face. Hang on a minute, let's get a better smaller brush. Is that going to work? That could work. Okay, so I've got these, uh, I got these off the internet. They're kind of round, they're sort of like a filbert. They're very soft, um, which can or can not work for you. It's a bit stiff, this one. He's had better days, so I just want to go in here and start establishing what his eyeballs are up to, and where the light is. So I'm just thinking monochrome, but my monochrome consisting of these colours. No, I don't like my brush. Uh, let's put it in to be cleaned. Um, <clears throat> let's have that one. So this is a slightly smaller flat brush. So I'm picking up pretty much pure birds here. Just going here. And adding some darks. And because he's lit from below, it's actually really lighting his cheekbone. Uh, I think I need some more darks in there, maybe. Ah, too much liquid. Eyeballs. He was going to be like Jesus. See, I'm actually using the transparency of the paper to be the light at this stage of the canvas. This is oil painting paper. Doing something very odd with his nose. His eyes are too low. So I'm just going to wipe that off. I think I need to wipe this off. So this is where you can use a rag to actually uh, create the effect you want. So she. So I'm going to try and build up his eye uh, almost in an anatomical way. just here. So it's kind of lighting the bottom of his nostrils. Um, and I do want this to be darker, so I've mixed some paint spray into this. Just to give that extra bit of darkness. You can almost see his eye socket there. So when painting eyes, it's a very good idea to think about the anatomy behind it. 
do a lesson where uh, <coughs> you draw the skull and then you draw the person on top. with a bit of red. Oops. Ooh, creating interesting things going on there. So use your rag as a tool. I don't think I made his nose look up. But hopefully I can correct that. So a little bit of turps required, I think. So I just need to go in here and wipe that away. That's better. But then that so it's quite a nice process of building it up. establish his lips and again you can see that he's lit from the bottom maybe I need to get his nose better okay so and there and give him a nostril so I can sort of orientate myself and it's a nice way of building up a painting so if I made his nose bigger I'm gonna have to bring down his moustache hmm and again that gets a bit darker there, possibly here. <clears throat> and then I think just come away. Just come away a bit too. Okay, and I think I need to soften that. So you're getting this nice light and dark thing happening, which you can then build on. So it's at this point you really trying to establish your tonal values and you want to be able to use those tonal values when you start adding the glazes so you want those tones to be right. Let's get his nostril making sense. So nose, 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 nose. So we've got, oops, too much win. Yeah, yeah, and nostril. It's looking a bit better, but not entirely like his nose. Uh, <clears throat> and then, let's get the moustache working. Moustache, 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 okay. And that comes down here. And that goes around there. And let's see if we can establish his lips. Uh, so we're sort of here. And this is bottom lip. It's darker. basics in the right place and their tonal values too. And let's have it's really quite light here. Let's have oops, too much paint on there, it's not sticky. Whoa! Looks like he's got lipstick on, so I'm just going to use my rag <coughs> to wipe away this area here. That's very strange. <laughs> Let's see if we can improve that a bit. And then, a uh, little bit of burnt sienna just here to indicate flesh tones. And then we'll go back into our beard. <clears throat> Like 
did, sort of, sort of. Um, so I'm actually moving further away. So I'm very far away now and I'm really using my brush almost at the end. So I can really see what I'm doing. This is the advantage of when, if you are painting, to use an easel so you can actually get away from what you're doing. Uh, there we go. And I won't use white, I say that, but I might change my mind. I won't use white at this stage of the painting. So what I can do is actually I want this to be lighter so I've just got some turps on my brush and I want that bottom lip to be that little bit lighter. Just here. And probably just here. Okay. Look. Hopefully I can rectify that when I start adding the glazes. So I just want this. And then that's sort of like that. Yeah. And I just want to stab that away. Ah, when you get this kind of ambu ambiguity going on in your painting, it's often quite a good thing as well. So the viewer of your painting fills in all the details. I just want this the beard to be sort of defined. need to get some dark paint on here. And we have some darkness going on there. I do need to find this quite strong light here. Highlights that highlights his Adam's apple. And so his ear is here. to his ear. Sorry, I'm just uh, seeing what needs to be done. So I'm not going to do that much more to it. I might actually give it a bit of a second coat here because with oils you have to wait for them to dry. So this is going to be a two or three day painting but each time, each session is going to be quite short. But using liquid is very good to um, get paint to dry. It doesn't really look like Felix but let's crack on. Um, and then I want to think about his eyes are doing and then he's got something happening here uh, which I think I might have to define when we get round to doing the glazing on top. So I'm just going to establish a few more darks here and then I'm going to leave it to add the coloured glazes next week. I mean next time, sorry, next time I start painting. Get his beard in, and a bit more of his hair up here, and it goes like that. So with hair, it's often a good idea to, oh dear, I've made him look very cross. No, he wasn't that cross. 
So looking rather Jesus-like, um, and I'm not going to worry about the pattern of the beard. So this is what you call an underpainting. If I had more time, I would be more sophisticated, but it's having to do it in this short amount of time. Let's see if I can just define the shadow here a little bit more. And here. really ill. Uh, this is oil painting paper which is perfectly fine. It is a bit absorbent and I think his ears are this way. Take his ear further that way. And you can get this nice scumbling which gives you almost lost edges. So I'm just going to take a little bit of turpentine, sorry I'm just checking for which is the right brush, because I want to get that back to being white. So that's a little bit of turpentine and then wipe away. Place. So it's sort of here, here, and then actually if I paint it and then I can paint hair over it, because it's in the right place. And that in here low. And up here. Yeah, I think we just need, ooh, just tweaking now. Darker and around here as well, so that's sort of doing that. And that. Now I need to soften these areas here. Top. eyeball in. That will be good. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave it there. I know it looks like a terrible mess, but once you start adding the glazes, I think it will work quite well. Having said I'm going to leave it there, I think I want to add a little bit more burnt sienna. And sort of going over this, into this very defined area of light, which is just the edge of his cheek. 
cheap bone. And so just having a bit of a fiddle. He's got rather a Charles I type look about him because this has got rather pointy. And in fact it's not quite that pointy, so I just want to bring that out a bit. That's better. I'm hoping I can resolve all those problems when I come to add my darker areas. So we've got this nice big tendon. Ooh, something over there. Something there. Something that. And as I say, what I might do is darken this down once it's dry, and then um, I can add the colour glazes next. So, so this is an underpainting I've already done in a very limited palette of Burnt Sienna, uh, Burnt Umber and Payne's Grey. And I will fast forward through the underpainting process. But pretty much I just use those colours and Liquin, which is my glazing medium. This is from Winsor & Newton. I highly recommend it because it's very versatile and helps uh, oil paintings dry within 24 hours and you can also use it for glazing. It's the best one I found. I found all the others dry a bit faster. Liguin will stay active for about uh, two or three hours. Um, and then I also, uh, have, as you will see in the fast forward video, I put on the paint and then pretty much wiped it all off. Um, I was all scumbled it in and then when I was actually trying to highlight these areas I just used pure terps or rather I just used the Bob Ross and you'll see how that works. So today I've got a quite a limited palette so I was more or less sticking to the palette of Caravaggio. This is um, what you call a chiaroscuro portrait coming out of the shadows that's what I was trying to emulate with Caravaggio and you can see I'm painting from this nice picture of Felix I did ages ago um, and you can see the light is actually very directional it's actually coming from it's very strong and it's the light I'm using today in the studio uh, it's actually very strong and it's coming from here so you're getting this very strong directional light and a very limited palette so creating the drama out of the light that you can see. So it's called chiaroscuro, um, um, which means out of the shadows, I think, uh, in Italian. You'll have to not ask an Italian about that. Um, and now I've got my underpainting done. Uh, so this is quite a thin layer of oil. It's all dry-ish. Um, <clears throat> and I'm now going to put on glazes and add more opaque paint to them. So I'll just show you my palette. So here, I don't know if you can see that okay. Here I have, this is a uh, transparent gold ochre which is quite nice, it's very transparent. Most ochres are very opaque, that's uh, yellow ochre. This is permanent rose which is a very zingy colour but if you don't have that Elysian crimson will do just to give a bit of pink pinkness to him. This is burnt sienna, burnt umber and uh, Payne's Grey and I've got a little bit of blue which I probably won't use but this is a basic palette that uh, Caravaggio would have had in his day. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually apply, I'm just going to lower that a bit so you can see what I'm doing more, I'm going to apply quite a large area of glaze and then start working in opaquely using uh, this picture I did previously as my reference. So I want a biggest, biggish brush and again I favour these long flats and I'm going to pretty much put a glaze of burnt sienna on and add a few things to it. So I'll start demonstrating with the forehead and you can see, so I'm, you don't have to worry about it too much because you're going to work into this with opaque colours. Oops, maybe I need some more. Uh, burnt sienna is very transparent so you don't need that much glazing with it. So I'm up here thinking about his forehead so I'll start with that because it's quite a simple area and uh, the nice thing about oils is they do remain reactive unlike acrylics which dry really really quickly. Um, so I'm just going to take a little bit of Payne's Grey I think and I want to have some darkness in here and the nice thing about this is you get transparent layers on transparent layers and you look, if you look at most paintings before like 1850 uh, you can see these layers of glaze that people put on create this lovely glow. Now, I think Annalise once told me that you could have 40 layers of glazing on a painting if you think about the portraits of Rayburn and 
uh, Reynolds and even Rembrandt, I think. There's a lot of glazing goes in there. And the glazes, you can see here, it's almost happening already, create this lovely depth. So if I call out his forehead, and I might put a little tiny bit of the pinky stuff in. I'm going to use this permanent rose. This, uh, was it Rose Madder Permanent Rose, was very popular with the Victorians. So it's really, really pink, and it goes a very long way. But I just want a little bit of pinkiness, so I'm mixing that with burnt sienna to come down here to make him seem slightly less like a boiled tomato. Uh, and up here. So now I've got my transparent <coughs> layer of glazing on there. I'm going to go in with some more opaque colours with a slightly smaller brush. So I've got a slightly smaller long flat brush. And I'm going to mix up um, some lighter opaque flesh tones. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of burnt sienna and see what happens, which is quite dark. Tiny bit of the pinky stuff. Ooh. And then some white and see what I end up with. I don't know if that needs to be a bit pinker. Uh, this white seems very stiff. So this is, uh, again, so Liguin you can create a glaze with it, uh, but you can also use it to make the paint flow better because my white seems rather stiff. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go in here. Whoa, that's very pink. And over here, let's try and get rid of some of that pink. And over here, and you can see you're working into the paint that you've already put on there. Uh, and as soon as you start putting white or anything opaque into your colours, you lose that transparent glaze effect. So I'm just mixing out a lighter version of that, because <clears throat> I want something over here. Um, and over here, so I can just put it in there. Hmm. <coughs> and I'm not going to worry about my brush strokes at the moment because I'm going to show you the wonderfulness of fluffing in a minute. Um, so over here, yeah, there's a lot of pink in that one. Um, I think I put, so the pink really goes a long way. And I don't know if people know, I really don't like pink. So I'm in here, uh, thinking about what's happening there. I'm painting on oil painting paper, um, which is not as nice as canvas. Uh, but it's perfectly service, serviceable. Um, with oils, you need to have a prepared surface. So, uh, I'm putting the white on first, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, to have a prepared surface, otherwise your, your oil in your paint will just disappear into uh, uh, the paper. Um, it just dries it up horribly, unless you want that out of your painting, of course. Realise that this is a bit too thin up here, so I'm just adding a bit more. So I've just picked up pure burnt sienna and I'm just working into the paint I've already put on there. It's all part of learning how oil paints work, really. Uh, <clears throat> because they remain active, you need to kind of pace a painting. So uh, this is a bit of Payne's Grey. I'm just going in there just to darken that down a bit. So I need to go on uh, and uh, add some more uh, glazes before I start putting the white on. So here, um, it's being because it's so strongly lit from over there. Um, I need to put on some dark, cool colour here, and there's something going on there. And I'm always using my trousers to clean my brush, so I'm just cleaning my brush because what happens is that you pick up paint from uh, the canvas once you start adding. Uh, paint around um, and uh, and then you have to clean your brush before you can apply any better paint. So you can be quite bold at this stage. Uh, going in here and trying to do his nose. I think I've straightened his nose for him. So that's a darker colour and I just want a little hint of Payne's Grey in there and here. And Payne's Grey as well is quite a transparent colour so you don't need to use a lot to get the right effect. Uh, to, uh, you don't need to use a lot of glaze uh, with it to get the effect, uh, to, to create a glaze. Um, 
and a bit up there. Err, I'll worry about his beard later. Um, okay, so I need a bit more glaze. It's quite useful also to have a light and dark brush. So if I call this my dark brush, my other brush will be my brush where I have a bit of um, mm -hmm. uh, white on it. So once you've got white in oil paints, it's really, really hard to get rid of it. So I want to go up here and get rid of some of that grizzly pink. I'm just adding some more burnt sienna. And then I suppose, so with beards and things like that, uh, tattoos, whatever, draw the thing first and then worry about the beard later. So I'll try to give him something resembling a rosy cheek over here. Ooh, or maybe a bit of transparent gold ochre, that might do it. It's a nice colour, this transparent gold ochre, because ochres tend to be opaque. Um, and this is uh, transparent, so that's quite a nice thing to have in your kit. So I don't know, now it's a bit too brown, but never mind. Okay, oops, again, clean my brush on my trousers, um, and I'm just going in here, eek, I think I need a bit more pinky stuff going on there, and I'm going to be brave and add a little bit of pink to my glaze to give him a rosy cheek, ooh, that might be too rosy, but Let's crack on. So I'm mixing up a burnt sienna and the transparent gold ochre and I'm just going to go in here. So you can be really quite uh, bold at this stage which is always a good thing. Um, I'll worry about his beard in a minute but I want to have that glaze on so I can work into it with these opaque colours. Um, uh, oops. Uh, I just want a little bit of stuff happening here and then up here I suppose oh I suppose I could do his ear at the same time so again uh, burnt sienna and the gold ochre and tiny weeny bit of the pink I'll put something here as well so I can do that area at the same time and you can see I'm just kind of slapping it on. It was quite eye-opening for me. One of my students, I was doing this exercise with them, and they just went over the whole thing with um, <coughs> burnt sienna, um, and then started working in the lighter colours. So here I have my lighter flesh tone, uh, which is opaque. It's got white and yellow ochre in it, and I can actually add that. And you can see it's uh, blending in with the colour I've put there. Uh, ooh, maybe a little bit lighter. So when you're painting portraits or uh, life, quite useful to have a flesh tone and various tones of that flesh tone. And you can see it's actually messing around with the colour I've already put there. <laughs> I'm getting distracted by wanting to paint a good picture. Right, so we've got the cheekbone here. And that's kind of softening the edge. This is the nice thing about oils, that you can really soften edges. And I suppose I learnt this technique early on from lovely Darvish, in fact, and he was trained um, classically in America. You can go to Florence and get trained like the old masters. You've probably seen people on Portrait Artists of the Year who trained in Florence, and they're always very sniffy about them, I don't know why. Uh, but they paint in the classical old master style, uh, which I think is pretty good, but they're, they're always... It's not a traditional English thing anymore uh, to do that. So I'm just mixing up variations of flesh tones and coming in here. And you can see it's mixing with the colour I've put there already. So I can kind of dab around there and hopefully refine it in a minute. What I need is another medium brush. Where's my other medium brush? Here we are. So that's not too big. So I want to have a little bit more refinement going on there. Ah. And so that's very lit. So I need to go back to my light brush. So I have a brush for darks and a brush for lights. Uh, so we've got quite a, an interesting shadow here. And you can see, so I can get this really soft edge because the paint is reacting to the paint already on the canvas and actually that is very white just there 
over here. It's not the same as having the person in the room with you. I would not normally paint from one of my own paintings, but I can't afford to pay Felix as a model. And I know I've done it once already, so hopefully I can do it again. So I'm going over here with white. So I'm picking up pure white, which is quite stiff and claggy, which is a good thing. I want a bit of pure white just there. And a bit going on here and a bit here and a bit there. <coughs> oh, and his nose. Ah, okay, so back to my darker brush. Um, I want to have some glaze here so I can work into it, as it were and a little bit of dark as well so I need some dark cooler colors maybe just there just here and here and let's give him a nostril why not uh, the reason why you paint uh, is it light dark to light with oils it's the other way around with watercolors is that once you've got white <clears throat> on your canvas you can never refine that dark again let's go and paint a bit of an ear why not here we go. You can see, so it really does make life so much easier. It's such a lovely way of painting this. Um, so I'm just going to soften that a bit. If I need to cool it down with a bit of burnt umber. Yes, that's that's the thing. Burnt umber and white. That's me. This cooler version. And then up here, whoa, see that there's no white left on there, so I'm just going to grab a little bit more and start sculpting his nose. Uh, and I'm going to mix that in. <coughs> and then this needs to be done something with. I'm not entirely sure what, but let's give it a go. And okay, so I need to have that not quite so <coughs> dark. Coming up here, and I think I need something going on here. You can see I'm just putting my brush strokes any which way because what I'm going to do is show you some fluffing, which is lots of fun, <coughs> but don't get too addicted to it. But this is the way to soften edges, so I'm just going in there and get the area between his underneath his eye, and that is really well lit. You start really looking and seeing the planes of the face. So I just need to do that to pick up some white. I just want to catch that because this is a round object, it's an eyeball, so it's going to catch the light more in some planes than others. Ooh, that's a bit <coughs> fierce. I just want to go in here and soften that a bit. And then <coughs> so I'm coming down here so again I want to pick up a light version of a skin tone so there's my skin tone. I'm mixing some more white with it so I just want to come down here and put that in and put this in <clears throat> and put that in and then I want to do something with his nose so so this is the very light area of his nose <clears throat> and then back to a darker brush I don't know if that would do it might do, might do I just want to have a little bit of something going on there and I want to soften that edge and I can just do that by adding active paint to the white so the edge will soften and I think <coughs> that's a bit whoops picked up too much liquid <coughs> that's a bit better and then I want to soften this edge too, so I can just pick up the darker paint and squish it into the white I've already got there. And then what's happening there? Whoa, I need to soften that, I think. I'm giving a very delicate little nose. Um, oh, and lips while I'm here with my 
burnt sienna mixed with white. I'm just going to go in and try and tackle his lips, which have been lit from below, so that will be the lightest area there. And it's such a nice way of painting this because you're almost sculpting the form rather than worrying about outline, outlines and things because the paint kind of moves around with you. Oops, I've just mixed up a rather odd colour. So here again, I've got quite a dark flesh tone. I'm going to add some white to that and think about doing something here. Her. don't like his nose at all soften there. Let's pick up a bit more burnt sienna there just to soften that edge as well. In fact. Right, so that's kind of, so I got quite a crude brush strokes there but it'll all be going away in a minute. I want to add a bit more white here so I'm just picking up pure white and I'm quite grateful it's rather thick and stiff and I want some pure white just here because the edge of the corner of the bottom of his lip is really well lit from the light below. And then, um, okay, so here I am. So we got that kind of, so that's actually whizzed on quite well. So I'm going to take a quite a light version of the flesh tone and try and sculpt his upper lip here to show that it's catching the light. And obviously here, what I've done is this is actually not quite as dark as I'd like it. So here I actually did make it darker at one point. And I just want to go in here. There, that's too light. To catch his other eyelid. And some eyelashes. He's got very nice eyelashes, Felix. I'm hoping I can <laughs> correct that later. Give him some eyebrow here as well. Oh, that's terrible. Never mind. <coughs> right. So I've got, I think I'm quite happy with that ish, main, vaguely. I just want some something going on here. This painting uh, here actually took me, I think, three weeks or three hour sessions. So it's nine hours. So it's going to be a long process. And I've only done this in half an hour. So it's going to be a bit more slapdash. Yeah, and I want to soften that edge just here. And with the wrong colour. Hmm. Uh, so a bit more burnt sienna, a bit more white. I want to get that idea of eyelids. Ooh, it's gone rather flat over there. So I just need to put that brush aside because it's got a bit mucky and pick up my dark one here and I want to go in that colour, see if that's going to work not really uh, let's try this colour which is burnt sienna, a bit of Payne's grey uh, do that and then something over here and that's a bit harsh down here so I'm just going to soften that so I can move the paint around which is nice now I'm going to worry about his beard and his hair Ooh, and his neck I think I'll do the neck separately hmm so I'm just going to maybe try and finish off some ear bit and hopefully most of it will be hidden by his hair um, and I do want, so I suppose, something between his beard and his ear. So again, I'm mixing up a flesh tone of oh, burnt sienna and transparent gold ochre. Ooh, that's a bit a last of plus coloured. But I'm just putting a bit of ligwin in there to smooth it down a bit. And maybe put that in there. Maybe I should do his neck at the same time some lighter areas just here where the light is coming from below and here and there Eek. okay <coughs> let's 
let's see if we can do something about his nose. Uh, so I'm just going to go in here and add some light there, light there, and a bit of light just there. And something's happening there. So we're picking up more or less pure white to find his nostril. I think I want to bring that down a bit. There we are. Jesus as we live and breathe. So what I'm going to do now. I'm going to leave the eyes till later, is I'm going to do some fluffing. Uh, so this is where you can get rid of your brush strokes. It's a really nice technique, and again, I learned this from Darvish, who was classically trained. And what I have, uh, those fan brushes are traditionally made for fluffing, but what I've got here is a brush that's gone a bit knackered, as you see the bristles are splayed out a bit, and they work really well. So I'm just going to fluff around. I'm not going to go crazy, because I did spend a long time being addicted to fluffing. But you can see, you can actually fluff out your brush strokes and really soften edges. Do look at your subject while you're doing it. Oops, kind of a devilish eyebrow I gave him. And I'm just going to fluff through this area, just soften those brush strokes, brush strokes. And I'm actually cleaning my brush in between because it will pick up some of the paint. And this is the secret of EL Masters, lots of fluffing. So you can see I can almost model his cheekbones by moving the paint around. Um, and down here, look, and up here. And as I say, I'm way leaving the beard to a little bit later. I think I want to fluff that. And definitely fluff this, because I want these areas to be softer. Oops. Fluff, fluff, fluff. And fluff, 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 fluff. And let's have a bit of fluffing there. And let's fluff this area. Might need to re-establish his eyebrows, but that shows you how your brush strokes can kind of disappear into the painting. And you can model uh, the form just using paint, one hopes. Yeah. Okay, oh, I could do his ear as well. So I want to fluff that a little bit. Okay, look. So now, I suppose, I might do his neck first before I tackle uh, his beard. Or will I? Yes, I'll do the neck first. So I'm just going to take again. I'm going to make a sort of glaze of flesh tone, so that's burnt sienna, a bit of liguin, and some of this transparent gold ochre or yellow ochre, and that is pretty much tomato soup coloured, so I'm going to add a tiny, tiny bit of pink, Ooh, that's a lot, a bit more burnt sienna, a bit more yellow ochre this time, I think. Yeah, well, that's horrible, but let's see what it looks like when you add white. Pretty horrible. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's go back and get some more burnt sienna. And I'll probably do. And I'm just going to go over this area, apart from the fact it's got white in. Let's just take burnt sienna. And I just want that over here. Uh, a bit more burnt sienna. And a bit more transparent gold ochre and over here. So I want that there. Nice transparency. Look, there we are. And then I want some darks in here because it's not just all that colour. So I've ah, got a bit of uh, Payne's Grey and whatever's on my brush. So I'm just going in here. I want that darker area maybe over there. Now I'm going to take my lighter flesh tone and start working it in. Uh, okay, over here. Uh, Eek. And a little bit lighter. so I can actually almost model the flesh 
by pushing lighter area in. So the paint's reacting to itself, as it were. Eek. Yeah, that's not bad considering. Okay, so I want a lighter version of the flesh tone, so I'm just picking up white. I will mix that in with my standard flesh tone. And I want to catch his Adam's apple. Which goes down here, turns into his chest. And again, I can almost model the tendon on his neck. Uh, and I'm not going to worry about the area there, but I would like a little bit of darkness under the ear. Oh, that's proving you cannot apply paints, uh, dark paint on a, where it's got white on it. So I'm going to have to pick up quite a lot of dark paint and pop it on just here. Mm -hmm. And again, and then I can soften that with my flesh tone. Mm -hmm. Hum. And then up here. Uh, I think I want some more burnt sienna. And then here, I might just leave that how I had done it originally, because this is kind of unpainted down here. Uh, <clears throat> let's get some dark going on. like it when paintings are unfinished. Uh, you can see the canvas beneath. So here I'm just putting on a glaze of burnt sienna. I think, and a little bit of burnt umber. Oops, maybe too much. But hopefully that will all fluff out. So I'm just putting on actually pure liquid now to get that nice transparent glow of glazes. And that looks like he's got a bag around his neck, so I'm taking my fluffing brush, which was here somewhere. Where did that go? Oh, that's my fluffing brush. Okay, let's have a bit of a fluff around here. So I'm just going to fluff here to soften that edge, fluff here to soften that edge, and over here. Them. He really is looking really quite Jesus-like, but that's the thing about having a beard and long hair. <coughs> hmm, I don't like that area at all, but let's not worry about it. Oh, I know, I can worry about it. I'm just going to wipe it away with some t-shirt. There we are, that's better already. Right, I'm just uh, leaning back. This is the advantage of working at an easel. Um, or, well, uh, being on a, a rotating chair, that as you can look, uh, you can get far away and appraise your painting. So, now, I'm just going to give all my brushes a good old wipe, because I'm now going to tackle the hair and the beard. Um, figure out which one's which, so that's a light, and that's a light. A plopping and that's small. Okay, so I'm going to take a big brush, this big brush, and mix up a glaze of, and I'm not going to go mad because I know Payne's Grey is very uh, transparent, but I'm just going to take a bit of Payne's Grey and put some on here. Mm. Have a bit of beard and a little bit more of a glaze. So Payne's Grey. I prefer planes grey to black, because black can be very dead. There are all sorts of different kinds of black, Mars black, ivory black, lamp black, which is basically soot. Uh, Payne's grey has got this nice transparency to it and a bluish tinge. There's also a lovely colour from Gamblin, who uh, is a posh American make, and they really know their colours. And they produce this lovely colour called chromatic black which is quite similar to Payne's Grey, but a bit darker. Um, but again, has got this nice uh, transparent quality to it and a bluish tinge, so it's pretty much is like Payne's Grey. Now I might go in here with a glaze of burnt umber as well. Whoa. Just to add a bit of life to his hair. And you can see I'm doing pretty well. I'm just covering the area. And 
has got this lovely curly hair. Oops. Oops. And a little bit more glaze to take the hair. Let's have a wiggle over here. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Right. So we're getting this almost chiaroscuro effect. <coughs> now Caravaggio, who everybody knows was a cantankerous bastard, someone pointed out to me recently that he never really had a studio of his own in Rome, or wherever, because he was always on the run, because he'd always killed someone or something. He had commissions, but he never had any pupils, uh, which is quite odd, being quite a successful artist in his day. Um, and but he did set up, uh, and of course he died reasonably young, but he did set up this um, absolute craze for chiaroscuro painting uh, in Europe just after he died. <coughs> and um, Artemita Gentileschi was also of his generation, so this chiaroscuro is really, really strong light. And I went to Rome and saw an exhibit of um, how he did his stuff, and uh, it turned out he uh, banged a hole in his roof, which didn't really please his landlady a lot, and uh, had this very directional light, and also had a series of mirrors that were bounce light from the roof uh, onto something, so you get this really, really strong effect of mirrors. Now, I put this glaze all over his hair, which is rather flat, so I'm mixing up uh, variations on a the theme, so I've got kind of uh, yellow ochre and burnt umber, and a little bit of white, and I just want to highlight a few little lights in his hair, um, and then follow one or two curls. Ooh, rather romantic. Um, and then, what do I want to do? Let's try burnt umber, and a little bit of light. I'm just following one or two curls. And we've got some curls going here. Yeah. Not right, so let's have a little bit more of the dark. So I've got a combination of yellow ochre, particularly in this portrait, and uh, burnt umber and some light areas. And we want something going on here, something going on there, so a little bit of white, I think, in the proceedings. Uh, so we want some, so some of his curls catch the light. So we've got this kind of effect here. Prematurely grey. It comes over here uh, <coughs> with a little bit more light. So one, two little gleams of light catching the top of his head there. Right, and now the beard, which is a similar process. And as I say, you want to think about when someone has a beard. And I noticed that I kept complaining to Felix and Mark. You know, they wanted work, and I want portrait models, and you know, and I really want to show them the face. Uh, when you're shaving off your beard, <laughs> and Mark very obligingly did, um, and uh, Felix's comes and goes. Uh, so I'm just again putting on this glaze of uh, Payne's grey and burnt umber on his beard. Ugh, that's the same colour as the background. Oops, let's have a bit more Payne's grey and moustache, and this brush is a bit big for these proceedings. Eek. So I might switch to a slightly smaller one. Okay, so you want to kind of uh, be the moustache. So I'm coming in here. Damn, that's got white on it. Uh, let's get some more paint grey going on. And more burnt umber. So again here. Catching what's happening over here. Eek. Oh, yeah. uh, have a little bit of light going on there, so it's not all the same colour, and it is actually being lit from below a bit, so I've got some lighter variation. I've got a little bit of white on my brush, and I'm going in, trying to give his beard a bit of life. <coughs> so Payne's Grey, Burnt Umber. I'm just going up here, 
So putting the beard on after you put the flesh on. Because you want to understand what's happening underneath the beard. And there needs something going on here, I think. So a few little bristles and this is quite nice. So the reason why I like long flats is that you can use them sideways as well. So I can go in here, make his beard seem more beardy. Mm. Okay, let's have it soften that edge a bit and catch that light. So here, because um, his beard is more or less the same colour as the background, I do need some lighter variations just to catch a bit of light. Oops, here, not to that colour. Uh, let's have that colour. So just catching that. And what I would do is actually make that area darker. Right, so now we've got the tricky problems of the eyes which are always the hardest thing to do, so I want quite a small brush uh, <coughs> just to model the eyes really, so I'm probably going to use those two and see how it goes yeah. uh, because the eyes are tricky so I want a bit of dark I just want to define, so this is burnt sienna, I'm uh, sorry, burnt umber and paints grey and I just want to define that a little bit more. Ah! Not, and then he's got some eyelashes here. Catching what his eyelashes are up to is always good. And really looking at what eyes do. So yeah that looks better. Um and then I just want a little bit of darkness there and here I think I want to tie it up a little bit and then maybe have something here oh dear, oh dear. it's all going to heaven hand baskets so that's the trouble with uh, doing portraits if you get the eyes wrong it's all going to heaven hand basket but what I'm going to do now is add the brownness of his eyes. Uh, and obviously that's slightly sideways. And I'm going to be looking at where the lights are in his eyes. So I just want a bit of white in there to make it seem less of a, just a flat colour. And then we want a little bit of paint grey for the iris. Uh, and to get in there. and then I'll worry about that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> so I've done that, done that. So I just need a little bit of the flesh tone. If I had any left, which I don't. Uh, so I want light flesh tone. I just want to define that area there. Yeah, in here. And I really don't like that bit, but let's go in here. So I'm just trying to model some effects of his eyes. If you're worried about doing eyes and you're finding them difficult, just study them, really. Just look at what they do. And you've got eyes, so you can do your own. Um, yeah, it's all going to go wrong. Right. Uh, maybe. Right, so now I want to do the whites of his eyes and the light in his eyes. So, in fact, generally the whites of the eyes aren't completely white, so I've got sort of a greyish colour here. And these nice small flats are very good for being quite accurate, amazingly enough. I want that in there. Ugh. And of course it took me about half a day to do these eyes when I did the portrait. A bit of burnt umber down here, I think. And probably some pure burnt umber just here. 
And then, I'm going to pick up some absolutely pure white, if I could find any. Don't seem to have any left. Ah. Sorry, I'm just trying to find some pure white. I've got pure white there, and I want to put the gleam. And it's not actually within Zyrus. It's just here, because the light was just out of his field of vision. So a bit of light there. I think I want a bit more light on the end of his nose. Maybe some there. And maybe a bit over here. And here. Try to describe the eye, eyes as round, so in a, so a round ball, it will pick up the light in various places. Hmm. Now I'm just looking at that bit and don't like it. I just want to come up here and over here, and then maybe tackle. Put his eyebrows back. Oops. You see, it's quite hard to get a dark colour to stick once you've got opaque colours on there. Yeah. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> so, I like to paint quickly for you all. I would spend longer titting, um, uh, titivating this, but I just want to show you uh, to make this really nice and chiaroscuro i I'm going to put another glaze of Payne's grey just here. Can you see? So that really brings out that little sliver of light. In fact, I think I want that's a bit cold, so I'm going to put some burnt umber in there too. And you can see that really just brings it out in a big way. Um, and a bit more up here as well. Um, and ideally, you would have done this first. Ah, I got rid of his eyelash butter. So I'm going I don't want it up here because otherwise his hair is going to disappear. But here you can see so putting that dark on immediately has made it pop out. So I'm going over here. And over here. And then I just want to show you another little trick, it's very popular with the old masters, which has gone out of fashion a lot, uh, particularly in England, Americans still love it, this softening of edges, because it does make things seem more like real life. You don't see things with hard edges, so I'm just doing a little bit of fluffing there, and I will get a small fluffy brush. Have I got a small fluffy brush? Yes. I just want to fluff this area here so it's not quite such a hard edge. It's not like there's no paint there, which doesn't help. Ooh. I just want to soften. I want to soften this so it's not quite so harsh. Okay, so that is, oh, here we are. This is what I particularly wanted to do. That is chiaroscuro portrait painting with oils. And again, it's actually doing the old master technique of doing a monochrome painting and then adding uh, opaque colours, adding glazes and opaque colours into those glazes. So, um, I will see you another um, time.